What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I am a senior at Valparaiso University studying communication and this is like my lifestyle fashion YouTube channel. So I say senior because I just finished up my junior year at Valpo and I decided to sit down and film like a reflection video of my junior year. I did one of these for my sophomore year and I also did one for the first semester of my freshman year I believe. Um, so I just thought I'd like keep the pattern going and do one for my junior year as well. What's interesting about this video is the fact that I have to like go back in time to remember the first semester of junior year which seems like a really long time ago but it definitely was wasn't that long ago um, but first semester a lot of really fun things happened I started off the school year living with two of my very best friends Callie and Erica in quite literally probably the nicest apartment I will ever live in I loved that apartment so much and there's a lot of really great memories from living there I also turned 21 during my first semester of uh, junior year which was amazing um, I definitely enjoyed turning 21 and was surrounded by a ton of friends and family which made it so much better I also experienced my first hangover and what it's like to get sick after a night of drinking and uh, let me just say, jungle juice, not my friend and will never be my friend and it really should not even be your friend. That's like the first uh, piece of advice in this video. Towards the end of the first semester, I also ran for counsel for Kappa Delta and I was really grateful enough to get the position of Vice President of Public Relations, which I currently held in the second semester. Um, that's when I like kind of took over. I think Kappa Delta has played like a huge role in my college experience since the moment that I joined this sorority, which I definitely would have, uh, wouldn't have saw that. Uh, I definitely didn't even think I was going to join a sorority, but I'm really glad that Kappa Delta was there for me when I needed them to be there. And I'm glad that it was Kappa Delta more than anything else because I have just grown to really love this sorority and the women in this sorority and the values of this sorority. And I don't know how many more times I'm going to say sorority in this video, so I'm hoping that's the last time, but it probably won't be. But on a serious note, I realized that after college, I don't think I can see myself not being involved with Kappa Delta, and I think that really says a lot about what I want to do for my future, and I'm only 21, I'm only now just going into my senior year, I don't have all the answers right now, but if I could predict the future and what I would want the future to look like, I want to work for Kappa Delta. That is end goal right there. That's what I want to do straight out of college. I have just grown deeply in love with this sorority. I know that whatever the outcome, I'm going to continue to build a greater and better Kappa Delta, whether it be through volunteering or working at headquarters, which would be super amazing, but I won't be discouraged either way, but I know that I'm going to do everything that I can to make my dreams come true because that is the kind of person I am. I really don't take no for an answer, um, especially when it's something that I really, really want, hence um, applying for counsel so many times. Um, I don't really know if I've ever like talked about this. I feel like I did in like probably like a Vlogmas thing because it happened around like December. Um, but when I was a sophomore, I did run for counsel for Kappa Delta because I really wanted to be the PR share. And um, I thought like I had like a good chance at it. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't like picked to be the person. Um, but then you have like a second chance to kind of do like um, like a speech and then there's a vote. So it's going to be me and one other person. Um, I guess you could say like going against each other, but it's really like no hard feelings. It's not something like super serious like that. Um, but I could not be at the elections because that is when my dog passed away. So I then became her assistant and I worked really, really, really hard during my sophomore uh, year to kind of just build up that relationship with uh, the council members and build up that relationship with my sisters and kind of gain their trust and support that like I could do this position. So then when it came time, you know, junior year, uh, December to apply for the next year, um, I wasn't too sure if I wanted to do it just because, and I'll explain this as we go on, I just had like a lot to do and I wasn't sure if this was something that I was going to have time for, um, but I started to think more seriously about it and that's when I was like, you know, if I really, really, really want to work for Kappa Delta, like I can make this work, like I need to get this experience, it's, it's doing something that I love to do, so I decided to go for it. And again, 
I wasn't picked as the person to be in this position. And at that point I was like, okay, what do I do? Do I keep going? Like, do I just give up and stay in the position that I was picked for? Because I was picked uh, to be on council, just not that position. And I told myself, I, not that I wouldn't be happy, but I know that I would be so much happier and I would do a better job in this position than this position. And this is where my heart is at. So again, it was the whole like speech thing and I was there this time. And so I gave my speech and I answered my questions and then the sisterhood voted me in as the vice president of public relations. So then I assumed that role instead of the role that the panel of judges had picked for me. It's really weird. I feel like every sorority does it differently, but that's just the way that my sorority did it. And um, I think that says a lot about me as a character that, you know, I kept going until I got it. And now that I have it, I work 120 million percent. Like, I love this position and I love what I do. And I'm here for the long run, basically. So I know that I said I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to handle this council position. Um, and that was because in October, I actually assumed the role of editor-in-chief at The Torch, which is the newspaper that I work for at Velpo. And so I started working for the newspaper when I was a freshman. Um, they needed someone on staff uh, immediately. <laughs> The newspaper was definitely my first home at Velpo. It was a huge factor when I was making the college decision choice because I didn't want to go to a school that didn't have a newspaper staff and, you know, that didn't really have like a good journalism program because I'm a communication major, but my concentration is in journalism. That doesn't mean I'll end up in journalism. I just said like I'd really like to work for Kappa Delta, but I have little things from all different spectrums of communication, which is really nice because Velpo allows you to take like a variety of classes, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I, as soon as I got to campus, I, I said, you know, I want to join this organization. And so I did, and they needed someone on staff like right away because someone had quit or something, something I don't remember exactly. Um, but I was doing stuff that freshmen typically don't do. Um, so I definitely had like a leg up, which was super cool. And then the following year, I was able to get an editor position and I was co-editors with one of my best friends, Taylor. And so she specifically did like A&E and I did features, but sometimes there'd be like some cross like listed stuff, things like that. Um, and so then it came time for the following year and um, we needed to have an editor in chief. And so Taylor and I, not saying we were the only ones that were um, qualified, um, but I mean, we were the only two that applied. That's just the way that it, I mean, that's just the way it was. Um, but everyone knew it was either going to be Taylor or myself. And um, if you know me and you know Taylor and you're watching this, you would know that we're literally the same person. We're so similar. Um, we get mixed up a lot. Um, there's been several times where um, someone in my family has said this or like one of my sisters has said like, wow, you guys look alike. And there was even one time Taylor said, she got mistaken for me at Target. I think that's so funny. Um, we even have the same middle name. We just have very similar personalities, but I think very different at the same time. We definitely balance each other out. Um, so anyway, it was very obvious that one of us was going to be the editor-in-chief because we're both very strong leaders and just remarkable women. And um, Taylor was actually graduating a year before me. She just graduated uh, this year, class of 2019. And um, they decided to give her the editor-in-chief position. It like made sense, it was fine. And so I assumed the role as like, um, like vice president, I guess, managing editor. So I was like second in command. And during the month of October, that's when the transition happened. And this isn't really my story to tell because this is my YouTube channel. So without like getting too much into it, basically what happened is that Taylor and I just switched roles. And so I became the editor in chief and she became the managing editor. So now I was doing my sorority. Um, I was getting more involved. I was doing the editor in chief position. I still had a job on campus and this was all on top of classes and like trying to maintain like a little bit of a social life because it's college and I was 21. <laughs> I mean, I am 21, not like I was 21, but you know what I mean. I was trying to balance a lot of things at once. My second piece of advice, um, don't take forensic science because that first semester of my junior year really kicked my butt because of that forensic science class. I went into that class, I don't know what I was thinking. I read the course description and I thought, this is great. I knew it wasn't gonna be like SVU criminal minds, but I knew it was gonna be, 
you know, a little hard, but not that hard. I should have taken it as a sign, some kind of warning, some kind of omen that on the first day of school, I got stung by a bee. Not on the first day of school. On the first day of that class, I got stung by a bee. I should have taken that as something, you know, something bad was coming, but I didn't. And I kept going with the class and whoo, let me tell you, hard. I definitely would not have survived that first semester of junior year without like the help of my friends and my family. Um, but I will say that there were some really, really dark times for me during that like transition of everything going on. Um, especially because I was very discouraged with like not getting um, the Kappa Delta role at first and I was very stressed with like taking over this huge responsibility of the torch and that forensic science class guys you just you don't even understand there were a lot of tears you can ask my roommate Kelly it was it was dreadful so moving on to second semester um, sorority recruitment began right away as did my position in the sorority of vice president of public relations the torch picked right back up I was taking 18 credit hours which is crazy but I was taking 18. Uh, two of those classes actually ended up being art classes um, and I think that really had to do with a lot of change that I saw in myself. Those art classes really challenged me and kudos to anyone who's an art major has to take those art classes. Um, shout out to my friend Jordan who is like an art major and she's into the graphic design stuff because it's hard and it's challenging but oh my goodness did I love it. I had so much fun in those classes and it was incredibly rewarding and I learned so, so much and I think it really just kind of changed. Um, I don't wanna say changed who I was because that sounds way more serious than like it needs to be, but it was almost like a new passion, a new love for something formed in me during these like times that I was taking these classes. And um, I definitely don't think I would have liked this semester as much as I did if it weren't for those classes. So a few little things. Um, my Kappa Delta family grew by two, this is four, two. <laughs> um, my little Sarah took on two littles and they're adorable. Um, love them. So talking to them about them like they're like tiny children. Um, they're just, they're really sweet and I love them both very much. And uh, Sarah actually, she graduated. She's also in the class of 2019. So um, that was really hard because I really uh, had a great connection with Sarah as my little and I think that she really helped me this past year as well. She's a great person to come to for advice and I think that she's gonna be an amazing nurse because she just has a lot of patience and a lot of love and I think that's what nurses need. Um, so Sarah, if you're watching this, I promise to take good care of uh, both your littles, treat them like my own. Um, also, my brother turned 16. He's very old now, very sad. So that was really fun. A big thing, obviously, I went to London for two weeks over spring break. That was amazing. First time out of the country. And I think because of that, I also saw myself grow as a person. There was just so much culture over there and I had a lot of independence, which was really nice. And uh, I just really grew to love that part of the world. If you wanna see like more about London, the London experience, I'll link one of my vlogs down below so you guys can watch it. Almost immediately after I got back from London is when I felt like something was wrong. I was definitely overworked. I had a lot on my plate with the sorority and the torch and you know taking over as editor in chief and I was still working a job, 18 credit hours and it just seemed all too much for me. During this time, I was receiving a lot of criticism between, you know, life at the Torch and life at Kappa Delta, and it was just really discouraging to me because normally I can take criticism very well, um, especially constructive criticism, but it just, I mean, imagine it hitting you like week after week, there's something, you know, Alexis, you did this wrong, or Alexis, this is wrong, or can you fix this, or I need help with this, or, something and um, that just kind of comes with being a leader of the organization you know talking about the torch of course um, you're gonna be the person that everyone needs to go to talk to and you're the point person you know you gotta respond to the emails you have to pay the bills you have to do this this and this and it definitely takes a toll on your life I feel like that aged me five years and I still have one one year left of it to go so <laughs> but seriously I found myself just completely overwhelmed and drained and I really saw myself in a moment 
I mean, probably a month or so, I just wanted to quit. The negativity just kept hitting me from like all corners. Um, but there's a piece of advice that my mom had given me and I wrote it down. So she just kept telling me that no one could expect me to be perfect. Um, it wasn't like anyone had ever made a mistake before. This was when there was like a few mistakes going on in the paper and obviously having my name at the top, being the editor-in-chief, that stuff falls on me. And I was just getting so overwhelmed about it and I just felt so bad. I felt like I was letting everyone down. But she's like, it's not like anyone has ever made a mistake. The issues with the paper don't matter. The issues with Kappa Delta don't matter. What matters was how I felt and how everything was making me feel. And so I realized after that that I just bit off much more than I can chew and I needed to give up something and I needed to focus more on myself. I found myself starting to tell my sisters in Kappa Delta that, hey, I need your help with this. And I started telling the other editors in the torch like, hey, can you handle this for me? Um, just little stuff like that, starting small. I ended up, you know, telling my friends, my family, like, you know, this, this, and this is happening. I need your advice, or I just need to cry for a little bit, and that helped as well. I decided to quit my job at the fitness center um, just because I felt like it was taking up too much of my time, and I really started to focus on myself and my grades because I definitely could not let my grades slip, and um, it really was hard to quit my job because I hate quitting things, but I felt that it was the right thing to do, and making a little bit of money every two weeks versus, you know, failing a class, I mean, I had to pick and choose. I think it paid off and I found myself, you know, feeling success and feeling happiness again with everything that I was doing and finally things kept chipping off my shoulder, you know, okay, that assignment's done, this project's done, okay, that art project is done, all right, it's the last issue of the torch, okay, no more stuff to do for Kappa Delta, semester's over. It was just one after the other and like things were good. In the end, even though junior year was super challenging and there were a lot of, you know, different things happening, I'm really proud to say that I ended my semester with the highest GPA that I've ever received. Um, so that was that was like a sign that everything was okay and that all the stress and all the tears and all the hard work definitely paid off, which was amazing because I'm very proud of myself and I worked really hard to get that GPA and um, it shows. Moral of the story and moral of like sitting down and telling you guys like the really bad stuff about what happened is just know that you're not a superhuman. It's okay to ask for help. You cannot sit there and just continuously get overwhelmed because you're not going to be okay. And it it's really it's really hard to sit there and like admit to yourself like okay, I'm overwhelmed, I need help because if you're like me, you just you want to do everything yourself. You want to have that like sweet success of like I did that like I accomplished this but you can't have that if it's going to be I mean I'm sorry but if it's going to be half-assed because you're doing so many little things like that um and so you have to ask for help and I'm really glad that I did because it definitely paid off and um I'm just overall really proud of how this semester ended and how junior year ended as a whole so I don't know when my next video will be um but I'm excited to do YouTube again and I'm hoping that next year won't be super crazy to where I can do YouTube a little bit more because I think that it's really fun for me to just kind of have these videos. Sometimes I just sit there and I like to watch like my old one second videos or stuff like that because it just really makes me happy to like see that. It's a really great way to have memories and oh, I'm getting way too mushy right now. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!